So I'm about to cut down this Daisy Duke. I left some pods go to seed on it though. Um, I'm labeling right now all of my seed heads. There. Uh, and then I am cutting them. Throwing them in my pocket. <laughs> Sorry for the jittery camera. <laughs> um, ugh, look at this giant snail I just found. That's bad. This is the first year I've ever actually noticed snails before. So once I've collected all my seeds, oops, a little out of focus there. From this Daisy Duke, the DD is for Daisy Duke. I got a couple more um, seed heads I think I'm gonna try to save and see if I can get viable seeds from. Um, I come down here where I have labeled, my marker wasn't working very well, but I'm pretty sure this will be okay. Daisy Duke, I wrapped this around. I use a Sharpie on the plastic. I'm gonna cut off the tops here and throw them in the garbage and get ready to dig up my tubers. So I've just cut off all of the stalks and foliage off of this dahlia. Every time I I uh, cut a stalk off, I make sure my scissors are sprayed with a 10% bleach and water solution uh, to sanitize them between cuts. So if one of them happens to be diseased when I dig it up, I haven't passed it on to the next one that I cut. Um, every time I cut the stalks off, I don't put my dahlia leaves in a compost, I send them to the town yard waste because again, I want to avoid any transmission of diseases that might be in any new stock that I bought from new places last spring and grew this year. As soon as I dig these all up though, I will be able to tell whether or not uh, they were diseased or not. If um, I usually spot these in spring when I pot up early, but sometimes uh, you don't notice until you dig up in the fall. So we'll see. So I've just started digging this up. When I'm digging up my tubers, I push down on all four sides and get it really in there, down deep. And then on the last one, I tilt the shovel to try to lift up. Um, this one is going to look weird. Something got at it this year. You have to be very careful. Look, did I accidentally lose a tuber? Yeah. Oh, well, that's okay. I still got lots more attached here. You have to be very careful when pulling them up that you don't lose your tubers. There we go. So try to get all the dirt off. This guy had either like a something rotted or it had some bug damage earlier this year, but it, it came back. So I'm gonna make sure I cut off any rot, rotted bits, any parts that look damaged by bugs, and then the rest of it should be fine. Because the last thing I want is to store this where there's rotting material and have it spread to the rest of the tubers in winter. So but otherwise, I think this guy did okay. I was expecting it to look a lot worse when I brought it up. <laughs> but no, it seems to be this one stalk on the one side. I think bugs got into it or something and it, it killed it off. But then it just made more tubers and more stalks on the other side. Uh, so that guy's all done and pulled up. So now I've dug up some tubers. And I need to wash them off. I don't want this water going into my garden in case when I clean it all off I see signs of disease. So I'm doing it on the road. <laughs> this one has a whole bunch of roots around it that were from a sunflower that grew really close by so it's really congested. I'm going to have to turn this up. Ooh. 
going to be cutting off all the hairy bits. All I want is the tubers. I might have to cut some of the um, roots off to get a better uh, access to the dirt inside. But this guy's looking pretty healthy. My gosh, that is a huge stalk with crown. But that's awesome. I know I'm gonna get some uh, a lot of good tubers from this guy for next year. This is Clearview Tilly. I can see new eyes that were already starting. Looks good, I don't see any virus. So when I say cut off all the hairy bits, like I, I mean it, all these little roots, you don't need them. I trim them all off. This one is a mess. <laughs> Maybe this wasn't the best uh, tuber to give you guys this example with. Little tiny roots. Well, those are actually pretty big roots, but like that's not gonna, that'll dry up over winter. There's no use in uh, saving that. If you have tubers with like tails on them, don't worry about snipping, snipping that. There's lots of energy still in the rest of this tuber. Um, you really want to clean it up. Don't be scared to cut all these hairy bits off and clean it up. Oh, there's a big tail. Tuber tails, I don't know. Also, if you see like a tuber, sometimes you'll see a tuber growing out of the side of a tuber. Cut that off, you don't need that. It's probably just gonna get broken anyways. It doesn't have a piece of its own crown. If a tuber breaks off and doesn't have a piece of the crown, it won't, uh, you won't get eyes on it. And you need an eye in order for the tuber to make a plant next year. So if I accidentally break a tuber off, I'm gonna throw it in the garbage. If I were to plant that tuber, it would grow roots, but it would just never grow a green stalk and flowers next year. Trust me, I've tried. <laughs> so I'm going to cut all these little hairy bits off so I can see better and better clean it and get all the, all the dirt off. I'm doing this because I like to divide all my tubers now in the fall rather than in the spring. If I were going to divide all my divide this into a whole bunch of tubers in the spring and leave it as a clump over winter, I would probably want to leave uh, the dirt on it and all the roots and hairy bits because they will kind of protect it and keep it from grow, um, drying out over winter. Um, I do it differently though just because I don't have room to keep these giant <laughs> clumps in my my back room all winter um i like to divide now if they're easier to cut through come spring this will be really hard to cut through as it'll have dried out a bit it's a little bit more pliable right now um and when i cut everything into their own individual tubers and i label them i can put them all in their own little tiny boxes or a big storage box with their vermiculite i use plastic totes not boxes by the way and then just slip them away on a table in my back room all nice and neat and tidy it takes up less space so that's why I do it this way like I said there's other ways other methods people do I'm just using what I find the most method or sorry I'm using the method that works the best for me and I have the most success with um, you got to figure out what works best for you um, and I'm hoping I can help answer questions along the way and help you find what works best for you so here are all my dahlias uh, they've been sprayed off and they are um, drying off. I'll go ahead and show you. This is a really good one. Um, uh, this AC shiitake, you can already see those little tiny bumps right there are new eyes for next year. So that's excellent. I'm, I could probably take this tuber. It has a nice strong neck, whereas this, this is just a little root. Don't need that. Um, look, a bit of this was sliced off here. That's no problem. That's fine. It'll heal um, and it'll be fine. Uh, I could cut just this off, this little piece of the crown with this tuber, and that'll be a whole new plant for next year. Um, 
Now you'll look, look at the size of this tuber and the size of this neck. This is excellent. That's going to hold really, really well over winter. Little bits like this though, I don't need. Those will dry out. Those will dry out over winter. We don't need them. They're weak. They'll probably break. We don't, we don't need any of these little hairy bits. See this? I don't need that. That's such a thin little neck. It'll break. And it's easier to cut them off now than it is to cut off in spring. Ah, come on, Falcos. Cut that thing. This I don't need. Oh. This is the mother tuber. You can tell it is a darker brown than... So this is what I put in the ground to grow last spring. And it made all of this. Okay, these are all new tubers. So I keep my mother tuber. I think they grow fine. Um, make sure there's no signs of rot or anything in, in it. You can also see where I wrote with a Sharpie, which when these are dry and when I cut them all up and divide them, I will also be doing that. I will be writing with a Sharpie um, what variety it is. Labeling is very, very important this time of year. Okay, and I'm going to leave these to dry. I normally don't leave them to dry in the sun. Um, I just haven't moved my area yet. This guy's been here since last night and it's pretty dry and I could probably clean him up some more and write on him, start labeling him with the Sharpie um, and probably divide it today. I don't like to leave them any longer than one day to dry out. Sometimes I have too many and I just can't get them all process fast enough so they will get uh, stay drying in clumps for a day or two longer than I would like it's fine but like the longer you leave them the more they start to shrivel up and dry out which is not good uh, that's gonna give them a harder time staying plump over a uh, storage period over the winter and um, come spring you might just have a shriveled up tuber that has nothing left to it that won't grow so a day, no more, unless, you know, you have to. Happens, not the end of the world, but I generally go for a day. You can really tell a difference. Every day that you leave them, they'll start shriveling more and more. Um, and these will dry faster if they're in the sun. So definitely no more than a day. I might move these into the shade in a bit. Okay guys, I'm gonna quickly show you how I divide my tubers. Um, always make sure you sanitize your cutters, uh, especially as you're going from at uh, tuber to tuber. Um, this guy here, shoot, I forgot my Sharpie. That's what I meant to bring out. This is Wizard of Oz. Uh, well, this pen kind of work. So I will write with a Sharpie, not a pen. I'll get my Sharpie after and I will label all these. I know it's Wizard of Oz too because I have this on, but I actually don't want this big stock. That's why I need the Sharpie. So I know what tubers are which, because I can't just, I don't want to keep trying plastic onto everything. Sharpies work way better. In fact, um, even uh, a year later when I dig up tubers, I can still see on them usually the Sharpie name that I wrote on the previous year. Um, so I'm still getting some little hairy bits on or little tiny or off. Any little tiny tubers with tiny necks, I cut off. I don't need those. Um, these have been drying for a day. Now look, I'm gonna show you right here. This one's a really good one to like tell. I see eyes right there and there. Those eyes. And they are attached to these nice tubers. So I could probably slice these off into their own tubers for next year. As long as a tuber has an eye, it's good. This neck is a little thin, so this is actually the better tuber. I can try to keep both or just get rid of. There. This year is next year's Wizard of Oz. There we go. And now I'm going to continue looking for that. Um, I have one here. 
that has an eye on it. The only thing is this neck is pretty thin. I'm not entirely sure that will make it. But that's okay. Sometimes you just gotta do the best you can. There's two eyes right there. Sorry, I hope this is uh, right here there's an eye. Sorry if it's fuzzy. <laughs> Anyways, let's see if I can't magically chop this off. And keep those eyes intact. Sometimes a knife helps. I'm using my Falcos. I might need a knife to get those guys sliced where I want them. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There. So, I have an eye here and there and there. I find eyes can come in um, threes. I don't know if that's helping to focus things. I'll take a picture. Um, I might be able to still further divide this as long as I keep that one eye. There, and then I want to brush off. Okay, this is what I'm doing. Sharpie to label them. Brush off any dirt that's still on them. I might even give them a quick rinse really quickly. But if it's nice and clean, I'm going to take cinnamon, dust them off with cinnamon. Cinnamon is a natural antifungal. It'll help um, reduce um, any rot over the storage period in winter. I'm using plastic totes. I will put all of my Wizard of Oz in here. And I will fill it vermiculite. And if I have room, I might put half Wizard of Oz here and half of something else there. Whatever. I'm going to put vermiculite in with these and then I'm going to store them away. I will not close the lid completely. It, I either need to drill holes in here or keep the lid uh, partially open to allow airflow, which will also help prevent mold and stuff like that. This method worked amazing for me last year. I've been over the last couple of years trying out different things and this by far worked the best for me. So it is what I'm doing. And that is why I show you guys my method. It's what works for me. Um, you might have something else you want to try out. That's fine. Go for it. But this is what works for me. And it, it all depends on what area you live in, how cold your winters get. Is, there, is it very humid in your, in, during your winters or very dry? I'm pretty sure we get a pretty humid um, winters. Here in my area, in uh, just outside of Ottawa, Canada. Also, I'm going to store these in my back room, which uh, stay at 10 degrees. The, it's an unheated back room. It stays at 10 degrees all winter, um, which is good. They like cool. Um, anywhere between, I think, like 5 to 10 degrees is really good to keep them. Um, but I, ha I know people who do not have, are not as lucky as I am to have an unheated back room that they could put uh, their tubers in. Uh, my sister stores hers in uh, paper boxes with vermiculite just in her hall closet because she doesn't have anywhere else to, not in a closet, just in her hallway on a shelf. And so that her hallway is at room temperature all winter long and they stored fine. There's always some loss. I can't stress that enough. You've had a good year. If, you know, 80 to 90 percent of your tubers make it through winter but there's still always some loss it's normal if you have a year where only 50 or 60 percent survive you might want to try some different methods the next year and reassess what's going on um, but there's multiple factors that that lead to your success for overwinter storing okay i remembered something i wanted to let you guys know one thing i've noticed uh, from my own experience, uh, every spring when I pull out my tubers to look at, any time I leave too much of the old stock, I know it's hard because you need to get a piece of the crown, 
attached to a tuber. And sometimes you can't, sometimes I don't see where eyes are, so I just divide the crown, divide like down the middle from the crown and make them into chunks. But I find the crown, um, sorry, I'm taking the crown. The old stock here, this old stock is where I find, um, if the more of this that I leave on, the more rot and mold I find when I pull my tubers out in spring, um, which is not good. So it actually um, lessens my success for tuber storage over winter. So I, those tubers that you just saw me cut off didn't have any of this. I was lucky. Like you could see where the crown was bubbling out from the stalk and I could easily slice it off and there was no no uh, stock left on it but um again it, it depends on the tubers all all tubers are different when you dig them up um you may not be able to see where new eyes are and or um a really like lots of um crown where the eyes come out it's a little bit different so that's the crown and this is the old stock the old eye from last year that grew into a plant and this is the material that grows just off of it that's attached to the tubers. Anyways, I hope that wasn't confusing at all. All I'm saying is the more of the old stock that's left on, the more I find your tubers, um, the more rot you'll find in spring. So it's best to try, if possible, to not have too much of this left on your tubers. <laughs> Thanks, guys. These are all the tubers I got from that Wizard of Oz. Now, just a quick note. Um, I washed some of these off. I haven't put cinnamon on them yet. They're still wet. I'm going to let them dry for about an hour. Um, there's also some parts. Sorry. Let's get some uh, where I cut. That needs to kind of scab over a bit, which the plant will do, and dry out. Um, same with like all these cuts here. So, but the only thing is, I don't want to leave them too long. Sorry. I don't want to leave them to dry out too long. Some of these have thinner necks, smaller tubers. Whoops, smaller tubers, thinner necks. Um, I don't want them to dry out too much. I think an hour for these ones are going to be fine. If they were bigger tubers, um, you know, if they got left for a couple hours, even a day tops, uh, that wouldn't be such a problem, but again, I only want, I don't want to throw them right in the vermiculite because I have all these fresh open wounds on them that I just made and they're wet. So I'm going to let them dry for an hour outside where there's lots of fresh air. I'm going to roll them in cinnamon, put them in this tub with vermiculite and their, uh, labeling. And that's, that's it these guys are done I guess I'll show you guys this is a tuber I dug out on two days ago I should have had this cut up and stored away already and I didn't and this one I dug up yesterday uh, you can already tell the difference between this one that's been sitting out drying out for longer than this one um, this guy needs to get into storage ASAP um, every day that you leave it out to dry um, the it literally the tubers will start shriveling and stuff like that and not looking as nice and you lose um the possibility of like uh if this tuber had been on here I, it might not have uh i might not have even kept it i would have cut it off and thrown it out but this guy might have a chance this winter and i'm gonna try as long as i only let it dry for maybe an hour right now and then get it in the storage right away. This guy I'm going to cut up next and get him put away immediately. He's already feeling a little bit softer. Um, and yeah, I left him out too long. So that's why don't dry them out for longer than a day. I would even go ahead and process these right after I've pulled them up and then let them let them dry more like this while well, they're all cut up for a couple hours and then store away. Um, but I just didn't have a chance to do it. So I know some people say they leave their tubers to like 
dry for after they've dug up for a couple days and then they're all like why are my why do they look like this a couple days is way too long um it'll it'll still be okay but the longer you leave it the worse it gets so you have to remember to get on it and do the best you can if you have any questions please don't hesitate to shoot me a message i hope i've covered everything in my video on my digging cleaning and dividing and storing of Dahlia tubers for you. Thanks guys.